It's, it's funny we were joking about uh, being a good pastor and teaching on the good pastor. That was, that was funny because we end up in Psalm 23 this morning, so we'll talk about the the good shepherd, the good Amen. pastor, the pastor, pastors. Of course, all pastors are under shepherds, but we'll talk about the good shepherd this morning. Amen. Turn over here in the notes. <clears throat> A song of David that talks about confidence, confident trust in the Lord's protection and provision. And Amen. truly, no matter what we go through, whether it's good or bad, we can confidently trust in the provision of a sovereign God. Amen. And so David, writing in distress, comforts himself in the only thing that's of any comfort to anyone. Again, that's the sovereign God of heaven, the Lord, the good shepherd. Read the text, Psalm 23, the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort Amen. me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And so here we start off in verse number one. The Lord, Jehovah God, Yahweh, the Lord is my shepherd, Amen. I shall not want. And of course, if we look at that name, the name of God is Jehovah, Yahweh. It means the self-existent God. Amen. And so who is our shepherd other than the self-existent, eternal, everlasting, sovereign creator, God of everything, Amen. the living God, the only true God. And so he says, the Lord is my shepherd. The identity there is God himself is my shepherd, Amen. not another. We don't have to worry about some hireling coming in. Jesus yeah. said of himself in John that he said, I am the good shepherd. And he gave his life for the sheep and those that the right. Father Amen. gives him, he's lost none. Amen. And so we see here, the Lord is my shepherd. Who is the Lord? Of course, the God of heaven. Amen. And, and Christ in his office, he is the good shepherd. He gave his life for the sheep. So the Lord is my shepherd. Not only does he say this, but listen, further looking into not only the eternality of God, the self-existence of God, when we study who the Lord is, who our shepherd is, We've got to look down into God's attributes. Amen. Who God is. Who is the Lord? Who is this shepherd? Well, we look at his immutability, his infinity, or his unsearchableness, his, his greatness that is Amen. beyond vast, farther beyond our comprehension. Who God is, his greatness, his unsearchableness, his unmeasurableness, Amen. his omnipresence. He's in all places at all times. Amen. His omnipotence. He's almighty. He's powerful. His omniscience, he knows all things. Amen. His love, his mercy, grace, his patience, his goodness, his greatness, his wrath, his anger, his hatred, his justice, his holiness, his faithfulness, the list goes on Amen. and on and on. And so when we he's identified here who our shepherd is, and this is for all those that are the sheep, he truly is your shepherd, not just for David, but all those who are saved by grace. The Lord is their shepherd. Who is the Lord? The Lord is who he has revealed himself in the scriptures. And these are a few of his attributes. And there's no more calming effect on the saint than that. Amen. Knowing who God is and that he is your shepherd. Knowing God in salvation and then knowing him in his character and in his attributes and everything about him speaks of peace to our hearts that nothing Amen. else can. Right. It matters not what we're going through. It doesn't matter if it's the worst storm ever. It doesn't matter if it's the corona. It doesn't matter what right. we're going through. Right. If we're on the edge of death and we believe that we're about to die tomorrow or at this very evening, there's no fear. There you go. The Lord is my shepherd. Well, who is the Lord? And when we know who he is, I shall not want. Him. I have need of nothing. Amen. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything that we would need in a spiritual walk, we've been given by God. We've been given the fullness of that in the grace of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when we know who he is, we know that he's our shepherd, we shall not want. We shall not want spiritual things. We've been fed. 
Amen. We shall not need emotional help things. Right. The Lord is our help. We shall not need temporal blessing, temporal things, food and shelter and clothing. I shall not want. Amen. He's supplied needs to his people. He's been oh so gracious to us. Now that doesn't mean we always get steak dinners. Right. But I'll eat a good ramen noodle. You know, God you provides go. what we need. He gives Amen. us what we need. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He is. And more personally, he is my shepherd. In a sense, God has no grandchildren, grand sheep. Right. You're either his personally or you're not his at all. You're not you going to get in by way of mom and dad. Amen. And so personally, he is your shepherd or he is not. And so he deals with people personally like this. God graciously supplies all our need. Listen to this. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Amen. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Mm -hmm. And so when we see that he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, what are the green pastures but the best place to feed at? Right. They're the best place to feed at. Where's the best place to feed? In the scriptures. Mm -hmm. In the Amen. word of God. The sheep ought to spend much time grazing in the scriptures. Amen. I have a hard time with talking to people that say, yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I believe in the Lord. Okay, how often do you read your Bible? Now I read it at church. Mm. Yeah. I hear it when the Sunday school hour. If the only Bible study that you do is a, a 30 second devotional that you see on your phone that, mm. that pops up and tells you one Bible verse, that's not grazing in green pastures. Mm. Right. Amen. Amen. That's not grazing where we should be grazing. That's not uh, lying down and being fed the nourishment of the scriptures. And not only that, it's not enough to read, but we've got to obey. So we've got to submit to the scriptures. Amen. So we, we get in there, we graze, we lie down, and we soak it in, so to speak. We soak in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So how are we fed? We're fed by that internal desire that God has placed inside of his people to know him and to study his word. So we're Amen. pushed forward by that. We have a desire to know who he is. And so not only that, but the Lord has given us pastors and teachers and uh, people to teach us the scriptures. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. He feeds us. He gives us what we need. There's an abundance of supply and blessing in the Lord. Amen. Righteousness, forgiveness, mercy, grace, strength, Comfort, supply, provision, help. Yeah. And all those things we'll find in the scriptures. You won't find them outside of the word. You're right. If you do not know God, you cannot know the peace of God. Amen. You cannot know the help of God. You cannot know what is the great comfort to the people of God. A sheep with no shepherd is a sheep with no rest. Uh, no comfort, no protection. No guidance, but he makes us to lie down. He leads us along. He pushes us where we need to go yeah, yeah. by his sovereignty and by his providences. He leadeth me beside the still waters. The thing about this is that sheep won't feed if it's real rough. Mm -hmm. They'll be afraid they won't drink the water. They'll be afraid. Mm -hmm. I think it's so amazing that God has so much patience for his people. I would have as much patience for me as he's been right. patient for me. And he so graciously leads us along to still water where we can drink, where we're not afraid, where he so kindly teaches his people. Amen. Think of there in John where Jesus was with his disciples and he said, Have I been so long time with you yeah. and yet hast thou not known me? Yeah. When he could have just said, Done with it. No, right. he graciously taught him and took more time with him. And, and He's gracious to us. He's a good teacher. He's a good shepherd. He leads us along. If you aren't feeding yourself a healthy diet in these green pastures, you're eating bad food. You're going to be restless. Right. You're going to be without hope. You're going to be without strength. And ultimately, you're going to be unprofitable in the work of the Lord. You're not going to be profitable if you're not feeding here where God has supplied our food. Amen. They say the grass is greener on the other side. It's not. The grass right. is greenest where the Lord has placed us. Amen. The, the grass is the best. The food is the most nourishing inside the scriptures. And I'm not saying we don't read uh, uh, other men. I, I like John Gill and Spurgeon and some of these men, but we've got to read the scriptures as well. Amen. You're and right. that ought to be our first source of food. Amen. Let's see here. True peace, 
True calm, true quiet comes from the Lord leading us beside these still waters. Amen. Yeah. And the pastures so green. Not only that, He restoreth my soul. Amen. As John Gill said, I like this. He says, either when backslidden and brings it back again, when led or driven away and heals its backslidings, or rather, when fainting, swooning, and ready to die away, He fetches it back again, relieves refreshes and comforts with the discoveries of his love with the promises of his word and with the consolations of his spirit and such like reviving cordials amen and so we think of this he restoreth my soul that's a very practical thing that really truly happens amen. think of all the times when you get discouraged or when you're down or when you're ready to quit or ready to throw up your hands and the Lord by his Holy Spirit working in you Amen. and through his word and through all these such like reviving cordials as Gil Place worded it how he comes and comforts his people Amen. and how he has such a sweet compassion towards his people Amen. when you be ready to get upset and be done he restores my soul or when they're backslidden and I'm not promoting to backslide. That's not a good thing. Amen. But I am so thankful that God is gracious That's to, it. to the true child that is backslidden to revive and restore again. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. The world would say that the path of righteousness and true holiness and inward, you know, uh, inward holiness, they would say that those things limit you, that they're not fun, that living this way is bad and you're really missing out but really there's no greater thing in this world than to live a a, a righteous life and a holy life and to pursue holiness god said i am holy be holy therefore as i am holy saith the lord amen and so when he leads us in paths of righteousness we follow god in holiness and righteous service that's where the child ought to be amen that's where the sheep ought to be is to walking in righteousness how do you do that? Well, if right. you don't know the word, you're not going to know what righteousness is. Amen. How do you know what God would desire of you if you don't know his word? So you read his word and you see what he expects of his people. Yes, we're saved by grace alone, not of works. Mm -hmm. We're saved on two good works that God has before ordained that we should walk in them. We're his workmanship in Christ Jesus. So we should walk in paths of righteousness. We should do holy service to our God. Amen. But notice lastly what he says in this verse, for his name's sake. Why do, we, why do we do the things that we do? Why do we try to be righteous? Why do we try to live holy? It's not for our glory. It's not for our salvation. It's not that we could have a better favor in the sight of God. It's not that we could please him. We do all things for his name's sake. Amen. See that? That's why he does all things, for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. Why is God good to his people? For his name's sake. Why is God gracious? For his name's sake. Mm -hmm. Why did God create the world? For his name's sake. He didn't get bored and say, well, I need some people. No, he doesn't need us. That's it. He doesn't need yeah. you and me. Right. He didn't need a people to worship him. He didn't just get bored and, and lonely. He's self-existent and he's self-satisfying. And he does all things for his own glory. Amen. Ultimately, God is for God. Ultimately, God is for God. Amen. Yes, He does things for our good and, and for our good and to help us, but it all stems from His glory. Amen. Why does He save hellbound sinners? For His glory. That's it. And so all things that we do ought to be for His glory. Why does He lead us in, lead us in paths of righteousness? For his own glory, for his name's sake. Amen. Why do we go out and witness? Why do we evangelize? Why do we pass out tracts? Why do we preach to the lost? We would like to see converts. We like to see God save people. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's for his glory. You're right. Amen. And we don't measure our success by how many people we baptize and get to sign a card and do all this nonsense. Were we faithful to what God told us to do and was it for his glory? Amen. And then we're successful. We've, we've done what we've been asked to do. All things are for His glory. When we fall in paths of righteousness, when we witness, when we evangelize, when we raise our children, Amen. it's to His glory. When we go to work every day, it's for His glory. Amen. When we protect our family, it's for His glory. When we 
Teach our wives and, wives and children, men, it's for God's glory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Everything we do, do is unto the glory of God. That's our number one desire. Or should be our number one desire. Amen. He says, He restores my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And then he goes on to verse number four. Yea, if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Amen. If I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it, it would be an insane thing for me to say it's always green pastures and still waters. <laughs> you right. wouldn't believe a word I had to say. You think I was moral. You think I was Joel Osteen if I said it's all green pastures, everything's going our way, it's all going to be happy. Happy go lucky. No. There are times for, now listen, he says, we lie down in green pastures when we go from one pasture to the next. Sometimes there's a valley in between. That's it. Sometimes there's rocky points in between. Sometimes there's places of trial, tribulation, turmoil, distresses. You know, you don't have to believe the faith healers and the faith prosperity nonsense because if if we were blessed, only blessed, Paul must have been the most unfaithful person that ever lived. Right. Peter must have been so unfaithful because they were always in trials and tribulations. Right. But when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, when we're going from pasture to pasture, when we're overwhelmed, when we're discouraged, when we're distressed, when we're in trial, when we feel like we'd be utterly consumed, mm -hmm. there's one reason we aren't. It's because He's with us. Amen. Mm -hmm. I will fear no evil. Though the enemy sits all around, I'll fear no evil. Though they're ready to get you at any point, I will fear no evil. Though there's... Uh, someone to oppose everything that I have to say at every point it seems, I fear no evil. Amen. Why? Thou art with me. Amen. It. it goes back to him being a good shepherd. A, a sheep is a defenseless creature. Right. Amen. A sheep won't do anything for itself. Why are we compared to sheep? We, we won't do anything for ourselves. We cannot protect ourselves in and of ourselves. Right. We cannot lead ourselves. Sheep are dumb. They, they just... Uh, you know, they'll do what they, whatever they think at the time. Yeah. And God is a good shepherd. Won't let us go. Uh, Amen. What an encouragement to our hearts. Even in those low valleys. Why? Because his rod and his staff are with him. Amen. Uh, they comfort me. Not the rod of correction, but the rod that would defend off the enemy. Amen. The Amen. rod that would beat back the wolves. Amen. The rod that would de de destroy the enemies. God's rod of righteousness and wrath against those that would do wicked and the staff was used to lead and to grab sheep that had got tangled up in the right. not only do we have a defense but when we walked ourselves off the path he'll guide us and when we've gotten a mess he pulls us back out amen so even in those dark times the rod and the staff comfort me think of all the times the special providences through your life and or you've gone through whatever situation most recently like the corona that was going around and it's, you know what gets you through these things mm -hmm. yeah the lord amen mm -hmm. what gets you through all that we go through in this life other than the, the good shepherd <coughs> the good shepherd that takes care of his sheep amen and say you were to have died what what gets you through amen. the lord it matters not if we're alive or if we're dead whether we live, we live under Christ. If we die, we're His. It does not matter. Amen. Because He's a good shepherd. And then lastly, he gets into this. He says, Thou preparest the table before me, the presence of mine enemies. God takes care of not only our spiritual and emotional need, He takes care of our physical need. Amen. Prepares the table before me. In the presence of mine enemies, even in the presence of enemies, we're protected by a sovereign God. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Amen. So this gives the idea that there's a, a, anointing the head with oil is a gesture that would show prosperity, that a sharing of prosperity and blessing. And truly, God has given us an abundance of blessing in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Truly, there is more than we've ever needed in the Lord Jesus, and more pleasure than we could have ever thought about in Amen. the Lord Jesus. And truly, true joy and happiness comes from the Lord. Joy comes from the Lord. Amen. And so we have an abundance of blessing. 
an abundance of help, an abundance of security in the mm -hmm. Lord Jesus Christ. Not only that, but he says, my cup runneth over. We're not half full, we're not half empty. Amen. Our cup Amen. runs over. There's an abundance of grace in the Lord Jesus Christ till that our cup is running over. I, I happen to think back, I believe it's Romans chapter 5, it says, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Amen. Yeah. And you think of your life and uh, the things that you've, the sin you've committed against a righteous and holy God, yeah, we're sin about it, grace did much more about it. Amen. You could you could leave here today and say, My cup runneth over. It's overflowing with grace and more grace and grace to get through times of need. Grace to get through hardships. Grace to get through good times. Even in our best days, we still desperately need Christ. Amen. We still need the good shepherd in the green pasture. And we think of how much our cup runs over. Yeah. Full and overflowing in Christ. Amen. Full and overflowing. And friend, we have grace upon grace upon grace. Does this not turn our... Listen, we're not charismatic in the fact that we're like to hooping and hollering over shallow nonsense. But if this don't get you hooping and hollering in your heart, praises to Almighty God... Yeah. You're dead inside. Amen. You're right. To know that all that God has done for us, and He didn't have to. Yeah. And we didn't merit it. Yeah. We didn't deserve it. We couldn't have worked our way to this point. We, we've done absolutely everything on the contrary that God should have had nothing to do with us. He should have said, damn you to hell. I have nothing to do with you. Right. And in His grace... On an old rugged cross, Amen. under his full wrath for our sin, Jesus Christ hung there in my place that when he was condemned on the cross and crushed under the wrath of the Father, I didn't have to die. Amen. Amen. And in his righteous living, he gave that to me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a good shepherd. Amen. 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 That's a good shepherd that would leave the splendors of glory for a wicked worm as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even want it. I didn't ask him to come. I had no desire for him. And he came out of grace and love. Yeah. That's the good shepherd. Amen. My father loves me because I give my life for the sheep. That's it. Friends, our cup is running over. And truly, if we had a 10-gallon bucket or a 100-gallon, if we had the ocean, our cup would be running over. That's it. Amen. Oh, what grace, what love, what, what care the Father has for us. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy. Amen. Follow me all the days of my life. And, and truly, if we think of this in an eternal sense, God, before the foundation of the world, placed in His affection and His love on us. And Amen. Choosing us and loving us and sending His Son for us and the Holy Spirit to come and re regenerate us. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me and they have followed me. And they were there before I was. Amen. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. There's not a day that has gone by that you're outside of the grace of God and the mercy of God and the goodness of God. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say, I will one day dwell in His house forever. No. Presence with Him, being in His presence, being with Him, having that relationship is now. Amen. Not just in heaven. Heaven's going to be glorious, but only because He's there. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so why not, while we're here, draw nigh unto God. Amen. Draw near to Him. Love on Him. Serve Amen. Him. Submit to Him. Learn of Him. Know of Him. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That means public worship. That means when we come together to corporately worship. That means in your home when you're by yourself. That means in your car ride on the way to work. Amen. That means in your family. Uh, men, that means 
teaching your family, worshiping together as husbands and fathers. That means stepping up and, and, and showing your children, this is the shepherd and we're going to worship him. Amen. And so I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When you wake up in the morning, thanking God for another day, blessing his holy name. When you go to sleep at night, blessing his holy name. When, when you get what you when praying for, blessing his holy name. Amen. When he says no, blessing his holy name. That's it. When we come together to worship, blessing his holy name rather than thinking about anything else that we think about. And even when we've done all that we can do, all things, listen, even if we came to church this morning and didn't have a, a contrary thought, to the very best we can do, we still need his mercy and thanking him for his mercy. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. And so really we see in this text, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. In this text is the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. yes. Is he your shepherd? Mm -hmm. Do you love him? Do you serve him? Are you following after him? We ought to be. Amen. We ought to be. You know, there was that was magnifying the Lord. That was talking about the good shepherd. That was blessing the name of God. But in there you can see that there are responsibilities for us. We are to live righteous. We are to follow after him. We're to worship Him. Amen. We're to serve Him in truth and sincerity. I appreciate your time this morning. Let's close in a word of prayer. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, righteous God, all-knowing, all-powerful, wonderful, uh, amazing, holy God, yeah. righteous and wonderful. God, we thank You for Your greatness. And we thank you for your goodness. Yes, Lord. And Lord, though we don't deserve any good thing from you, you've been so good to us. And Lord, I ask that you forgive me for not thanking you as I ought to and not praising you as I ought. Lord, I pray that you would fix our hearts on you this morning. Lord, as the brother preaches, I pray that you would use him, Lord, help us feed your sheep this morning. God, we thank you for another time to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.